Um, so we're going to get right into it. And we're going to start off this episode with a little bit of neck biology, just in case you guys are wondering, like, how different is skin? The good thing is there is a really nice review paper that does summarize a little bit of the skin biology quite well. Ultimately, as the theme of us is neck biology has its own complexities. Mm -hmm. And one really challenging thing about neck skin is that it actually reflects aesthetic changes earlier. Uh, no, also, no, 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 no. <laughs> I know, I know. It's like we already hear about the collagen dwindling and da 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 da. But of all the regions of skin, mm -hmm. especially in comparison to face, um, it's known that this is the case, which is quite sad. However, the reason why we say neck skin is complex is because it's more than just, nor I guess neck aging is complex, is because there's a lot at play. There's actually three mm -hmm. culprits. So one is, yes, the skin itself. Um, mm -hmm. Two is, the fat deposit underneath, and three is our own neck muscle. And we're just gonna touch on a little bit of in each section so that everyone mm -hmm. kind of has some context before we actually get into topical neck skincare. So I'll start off with a little bit on skin. First things first, uh, in comparison to the cheek skin, neck is actually only about 80% as thick, so it is uh, thinner than the cheek skin, but it has three times the extensibility with significantly greater viscoelasticity and elasticity. Just generally, if you're thinking of like the pulling and pushing the bounce of skin, and this is necessary. This is in order. It makes a for, lot of sense. Yeah. Right. In order, think of your neck rotation, how far, where, you know, how much it impacts your vision and your turn of the head. So this is our the neck skin differs than our face i will have you know as we're prepping this episode i'm like i find myself doing a lot of like extending my chin forward yeah, yeah you're just like, to side, just like very self-conscious of all the movements that yeah. involve the neck yeah, you're just like oh no i'm just stiff neck it's just stiff neck <laughs> <laughs> um yep, yep okay some challenges that the neck skin faces Unfortunately, because of the elasticity, it does demonstrate mm -hmm. a highly significant negative association with increasing age. And they found that this correlation is even greater in the neck area than even our cheeks. And they've actually also tested in forearm skin. And honestly, mm -hmm. it's just because of its mechanical nature and how much it's involved in motion. Mm -hmm. And the other tough part with neck skin is that the depth of the neck wrinkle is actually highly correlated with age, which is actually not that surprising. But unfortunately, the depth of the wrinkle is actually found to be fivefold greater than cheek wrinkles. So this Sweet. is- I know, I know guys, just, yeah, we're gonna get through it. We're gonna see how much, well, actually, hopefully you guys will see it more as like, this is how much our neck does for us, you know, so. I'll be honest, I have, I've had like these like one or two lines on my neck since mm. I think college. It, it's like it's one of those like it's a nature of how a, a lot of biology comes with genetics and how you're mm -hmm. naturally predisposed predisposed i swear to god there is like a way i would I like lay on my back in the most unhelpful posture ever since high school reading or doing whatever so i have like two very natural lines and recently as, as we're doing this episode i'm like musing about you know neck aging and whatnot and i realized i think everything ties together right like mm -hmm. even though these lines really have been there since I was very young but when I was very young I don't have other signs of aging yep. but now it's like I don't I can't tell if the lines are worse or yep. they look worse because other things have gone south too <laughs> yeah and it's almost like once you start fixating you can't mm -hmm. not notice and you're like yeah <laughs> yeah exactly and us we're like doing these like chin out yeah. exercises i'm pretty sure it's not <laughs> helpful <laughs> yeah exactly it's hard to look away after you notice <laughs> yes very much so cool well next we have fat deposits and i'll be honest it's something that like i think it's something that if you think about it it makes sense but it's not something you you think about very explicitly when you mm -hmm. talk about neck aging i think skin and muscle makes a lot of sense but without a lot of um weight change you don't think about fat deposit but the thing is with aging the way your fat deposit regardless of your weight does change as well and this is very relevant in the neck area mm -hmm. i used to think it's because i'm getting stressed and this is a lot of like muscle <laughs> fatigue but it's also increasing just fat uh fat deposit and 
that like really crisp angle that's associated with youth that becomes a lot less crisp or the slope the angle is starts it just just gets a little bit less defined and the big part of it too is that it gets a little bit chunky and it's not just like a thin layer of fat the layer of fat isn't just like a thin layer. The overall volume of this a- this area definitely balloons with time. Balloon sounds like a very scary word, but just generally speaking, you just look a little bit more substantial there. And I also thought for a while that it's like mommy arms, like because you feel like you're holding your kid all the time at this angle. So it just that area just becomes a little bit more padded. It's I think it's just it's age, and if you have a baby, I feel like it definitely magnifies that effect a little bit. Yeah. And the other thing that um, some people might notice is like the general like chin area, um, how Mm -hmm. like that structure and the fat deposit Mm -hmm. that accumulates as we age, you know, the infamous double chin. That's something that's also natural with aging diet or no diet, you know. So, Mm -hmm. um, yeah, the fat structure itself also can affect general neck, I guess, the aesthetic look of the neck. I have also like uh, when we were looking into this, yeah. the what Victoria is mentioning, kind of like that natural fat deposit to generate the double chin look. That's also usually exacerbated by your face skin um, slowly having a slight sag effect, so your ah! jawline becomes <laughs> a ah! little bit less defined. So that is like kind of a double whammy of mm-hmm. like just the definition being less defined over time. The final, you know, contributor is just muscle. Yeah. Something that you guys mo- n- might notice is if you kind of grimace and you kind of strain your neck, you can see those like um, vertical lines. Obviously, this, you know, the as we age, this can become more pronounced and mm-hmm. it can make these people will also consider as, ver- you know, wrinkles as well. But actually in topical care, it's like quite different. They'll call this the platysmal bands. Um, and mm-hmm. you can these seem to become more pronounced and look like it's contracted. Um, mm-hmm. Gloria's like holding her neck. It's funny as I yeah, say I'm that. Yeah, like, well, I'm holding my my neck. It's fine. Just wear just wear turtlenecks, guys. <laughs> yeah. Um. So the structure around you know even just the vertical column will will change with time. So, you know, there's a lot of this. Um, will start if you do your own uh research and you go down the rabbit hole. You'll start looking into things that might make you end up in like cosmetic surgery town and i just uh, more just to warn you guys but also know that this is part of aging it's part of using your neck muscle it's part it genes play a factor this is natural it's it's Mm -hmm. it's normal for this to happen and it's just a matter of is skincare remotely helpful in maybe just having our necks age more gracefully and that's actually what we're going to focus on today is topical skincare and the focus of treating skin because Skincare isn't going to tackle anything structurally. No fat, no muscle, and don't let any neck cream tell you otherwise. Yeah, and that's part of why maybe when we talk, we'll go through it more in the next section. Mm-hmm. When we talk about neck cream marketing, it might feel like the what it promises and the results that you see, maybe there's like kind of an expectation difference. Mm-hmm. Um, but the biology is why, right? Like the topicals will focus will always be on skin. It might address some fat things, but like, let's just say that's not the efficacy level isn't going to be super duper helpful and it should absolutely not do anything on the muscle front. So this is why it's a little bit beyond just topical, but we'll take a look at next section on just how helpful topicals can be.